Hello everyone, welcome back to the Syntax UK YouTube channel. My name is Matt and today I'm going to be bringing you the first in a brand new series that we're calling Syntax Explains, where I'll be breaking down some of the terminology that you're likely to come across in the sound engineering, music recording and audio production world. I'll also be explaining the differences between some of the many professional audio devices we supply here at Syntax Audio UK from our brands such as RME, Ferrofish, Calrec, Apsis and Direct Out. In this first episode, I'll be breaking down the question, what is an audio interface? So what is an audio interface? Well, in its simplest form, it's an external device that allows you to record and playback audio with your computer. So you can connect microphones and instruments for recording, as well as speakers, studio monitors, or headphones for listening back to what you record. You can also think of an interface as an external sound card, albeit a much more high quality one than you would find in an off-the-shelf PC, Mac, or laptop as well as having connectivity that is specifically designed for music production. Regardless of the size of your recording setup, so whether you're a bedroom producer who is working in the box, or you're working with large mixing desks in big commercial studios or on live music tours, if you are using a computer or DAW for recording and mixing, then you're gonna need a way of getting these individual audio channels in and out of your Mac or PC. An audio interface is designed to do just that. And as such, there are a wide range available and these can differ depending on the features that you need to the amount of channels that you plan on recording. Most interfaces these days connect to your computer via USB or Thunderbolt. Although if you have a desktop machine, you may prefer to use a PCIe sound card, which is installed directly onto the motherboard. It's also worth noting that in previous years, Firewire was generally the connection of choice, although that's for the most part now been superseded by USB and Thunderbolt. Equally, you may have also seen interfaces that use ethernet, but this is generally found on devices designed specifically for audio networking. These tend to be used less in home studios, however, and are more commonly found in large audio installations, big production studios, and also in live music environments. So it should already be clear that an audio interface is essentially a whole load of devices all rolled into one. So it's a sound card, a microphone preamp, an analog to digital and digital to analog converter, that's also known as an ADDA, as well as a headphone amplifier, and in some cases, it can even be a format converter. It's worth noting that many of the things that I've just listed can also be purchased as standalone devices as well. So you may be wondering what the difference between an audio interface, an ADDA converter, and a microphone preamp is. And that's something that we'll be exploring a bit later on in this series. But for now, all you need to know is that an audio interface is all of these things rolled into one and it connects to your computer to allow you to do some audio production. Depending on the interface, you may also find some other features like level metering on the front panels, which allows you to keep an eye on the levels going in and out of your interface, as well as hardware and software controls for keeping an eye on things like your microphone gains and speaker levels. Some interfaces also feature something called DSP or digital signal processing. You can kind of think of it as a mini computer that sits inside of the interface and it does some of the harder processing tasks and takes away some of the heavy lifting from your Mac or PC. Depending on the interface, the DSP may allow you to run things like plugins directly from the interface or in the case of RME, provide a software controller for all of your channel routing giving you the option to send audio to different places like multiple headphone mixes when you're working with other musicians or using effects like EQ and compression or reverb and delay as part of your monitoring chain. One thing worth noting is the subject of latency and latency is the time it takes for whatever you are recording to pass through your interface into your computer or DAW back to your interface, to your headphones and studio monitors. With modern computers and interfaces, this is all done in a few thousandths of a second or milliseconds. 
But if this latency is too high, then it means that there is an audible difference between what you are recording and what you are hearing. And this can be really off-putting and it can make it difficult to keep time when you are recording. Latency is actually affected by a number of different factors. And that could be how powerful your computer is, how large the recording project you're working on is, how many and what kind of plugins you're running, the list goes on. If you'd like to test the latency on your system, we recommend a free software application called RTL Utility, which you'll find a link for in the description below. There are two main ways to tackle the problem of latency, and one is audio buffer size. Now this is the amount of processing that the computer does to the audio. A lower buffer size means lower latency, but this then puts strain on your computer and can create some audible pops and clicks. The other way to tackle the issue of latency is to use direct monitoring or latency free monitoring as it's called sometimes. And this is available on some interfaces. In the case of RME interfaces, you can use RME software controller Total Mix FX to route any of your incoming audio signals, such as microphones or guitars, straight to your headphones or speakers. This means you're monitoring the recording signal directly from the interface rather than with processing from the computer, giving you essentially zero latency. Audio interfaces can feature a wide range of analog and digital input and output connections. The number of different sources you can connect at any one time depends on the interface's channel count. In other words, the number of physical input and output connections that you have available, both digital and analog, and this is sometimes abbreviated to I.O. Inputs allow you to send audio into the interface and outputs are sending audio out of the interface. Analog input signals such as microphones or instruments are then converted into digital data using the onboard analog to digital or AD converter. For analog you'll usually find standard connector types like XLR, TS and TRS which are used for connecting microphones, instruments and studio monitors. At the same time digital data is then converted to analog signals which is then sent to your headphones or studio monitors for playback. Digital signals can also be received using digital inputs, so this could be ADAT or MADI, and then this data can also be sent to other digital devices using the digital outputs of the interface. In terms of digital connections, you may find a wide range of different connections that are used generally for expanding your interface's channel count from optical or coaxial connections for ADAT and SPDIF I.O. all the way up to SC and LC connectors for MADI, Ethernet connections for networking formats such as Dante and AVB, BNC connectors for word clock, and also MIDI connections for sending and receiving MIDI data, which allows you to work with MIDI instruments like synthesizers and drum machines, as well as MIDI controllers. If all of this is starting to sound a little bit too technical, don't worry. Just remember that an audio interface can do a range of different tasks, but its overall goal is still the same, and that is to get audio in and out of a computer on separate audio channels. So we said earlier that audio interfaces can vary depending on the feature set and also the channel count. So we're gonna have a look at a few examples from RME. RME's range covers a number of different audio formats and channel counts. It starts from the compact 24 channel Babyface Pro FS, right up to the 188 channel Fireface UFX Plus, and the 394 channel Madiface XT and Madi FX PCIe cards. These channel counts are often made up of a mixture of analog and digital I.O. options and that's how such a high channel count can be available on such small devices. RME also has a number of interfaces that are specifically designed for working with certain audio formats and this can be audio networking like Dante and AVB as well as other digital formats like MADI and ADA. and if you're unsure on any of those don't worry we will be covering those in future videos in this series. So I've got the RME Fireface UCX2 here and I'd say this was a pretty good approximation of what most people would think of when they thought of what an audio interface would look like. 
So it's a small unit, it's got two microphone preamps on the front and these double as TRS connections as well. Also got another couple of TRS connections here for instruments and line level inputs. So we have this headphone output here for quick monitoring with headphones. And on the back we have some more line level inputs as well as some line level outputs for your studio monitors. And we mentioned uh, digital connections like ADAT earlier and these are perfect for expanding an interface like this with more mic preamps or a dedicated ADDA converter for instance. And that's just here as well, we've got one ADAT in and one ADAT out. There's also the USB connection which is obviously how the UCX2 connects to your computer. Next up we've got the Fireface 802 which is double the width of the UCX2 and that's because it's designed to be rack mounted in a 19 inch rack and it's a standard size called 1U or 1RU. The input and output options are actually pretty similar to the UCX2. We've got four Combi XLR inputs on the front here which again can also accept TRS and TS cables. The 802 also has two headphone outputs on the front panel. Again on the back we have a range of line level analog I.O. as well as dual ADAT I.O. ports and that USB connection is there again. You'll also notice that this particular interface has the Firewire connections as well which as I mentioned earlier is just an alternative way of getting the 802 connected to your computer. Let's move on to these two now. So we have the Digiface USB and the Digiface AVB. Now they're very different in look compared to the 802 and UCX2. They're actually doing a very similar job. In the case of the Digiface USB, this is specifically an ADAT interface. So it's only using ADAT inputs and outputs. And that allows other ADAT digital gear to get into the Digiface USB and then into your computer. And just like the 802 and the UCX2, we're also using a USB port for that. And you'll notice also, even though it's absolutely tiny, this it's got a dedicated headphone output for quick monitoring too. And the same goes for the RME Digiface AVB, which is specifically designed for getting audio from an AVB network into and out of a computer for recording and monitoring. I won't be discussing AVB in any detail here, but it's essentially another way of transferring digital audio, only this time it's on a network. And it uses standard ethernet cabling like Cat5e and Cat6. Again, I'll be going into AVB and audio networking in another video in the series later down the line. Despite the differences in the size and I.O. that's available on these interfaces, the job of all of them remains the same at their core, and that's getting sound in and out of a computer. So that's it for our breakdown of audio interfaces. I hope you found this video useful, and if you have, please do make sure that you give us a like on this video and subscribe to our channel so that you get to see any of the new content from our Syntax Explained series as it becomes available. Now, if you want any more in-depth information in terms of audio interfaces or any of the other topics we've covered today, then click the link in the description box below to read a written article with a load more information on audio interfaces. And finally, if there's something that you would like us to cover in this new series, leave it in a comment in the comment section below too. Thanks very much guys and I will see you again next time.